Uh, next speaker is the Grandma for Ganja Woman, Magic, Black Ferguson. Welcome, Magic. I don't know if this is on. Thank you, thank you all for that. Um, yeah, I'm out of the closet, Grandma's for Ganja. And uh, I also have five, uh, five uh, children, and my oldest boy, how, what, it got in, what got in me into this was when my oldest son was, uh, I found him smoking pot, and I said, eh, okay. I didn't know anything about it at the time, so I had my first taste of cannabis, and I was waiting for reefer madness to set in, and it never showed up, so I thought, hmm, there's more to this than, than, uh, than we've been told. And time goes on, and I read a book that got me off my sofa, and that was called uh, Ain't Nobody's Business If You Do, The Absurdity of Consensual Crime in a Free Society, and uh, by Peter McMillian. What? There's a guy standing... How old were you when you started flying? How, how old was I? Yeah. Uh, that's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we wound up... Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, oh yeah, Peter McWilliams' book. Um, you know, senior moments. That's one of the good things about being a grandma. You can say senior moments, and everybody accepts it. So, so uh, Peter McWilliams' book got me off my sofa. I was reading about uh, the laws on uh, cannabis, and I happened to be managing an apartment building in Seattle at the time, and I was smoking pot after work and having a good time. I enjoy it as a relaxer. I don't drink. And so um, I read in his book that not only could my owner of the, the building lose his property, even though he didn't know anything about it, you know, for somebody smoking pot in his building. So I thought, that's wrong. That is absolutely wrong. And so that got me started. And then I was reading history about alcohol prohibition. And this cannabis prohibition that we have is so much like alcohol prohibition that Grandma's for Ganja, which is based on the Women's Organization for National Prohibition Reform, which was formed in 1929 and disbanded in 1932 after they repealed the 18th Amendment, which was their goal to, re to get alcohol back legalized and regulated and taxed. So we took their Declaration of Principles, and we adapted it. And the only difference between the, the Declaration from 1929 and 1932 is the word alcohol. We changed alcohol to cannabis. The thing reads perfect. Go on to the website, grandmasbaganja.org, come by the booth, and uh, there's all kinds of little uh, donation things pencils or something, whatever you want to pick up. And we also have some cards over there. We're doing a postcard campaign. This is really big. Um, what we're doing is we have it printed out so that we support Barney Frank's three house resolutions this year. And you come over and you sign it, name, just name, city, and state, and then we're going to send it off to Barney. And they're beautiful. They're red and white. You can't miss them. They said, Grandma's for ganja on it. We can do it. And you don't have to be a grandma. You can be a grandpa, too. So come by, swing by. Barney's got them. Um, come and he, knows, he knows they're on their way. I told him they were. So do that. We, got, we can end this if we stick together. But want, I want to bring the women into this because, you know, we're 52% of the population, gals. You know, we got a lot of power. And it's more than between our knees, if you know what I mean. So, all we have to do is just get 26% of us and, uh, you know, we can, we can move the world, you know. We can, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Just remember, that's an old saying. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. And if you're not a grandma for ganja, you can be a grandma for ganja in waiting. So... Just remember that. You can buy the booth and we'll get this thing taken care of in four years, in less than four years, all right? Promise. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Magic. I want the, uh, the sign lang language woman to uh, teach us all the, the symbol for cannabis in sign language. 
uh, is there a, pot, a symbol for pot or something or or reefer or ganja? You have to spell it out. We can make one. Next uh, speaker, I guess she's out of the closet. She's Miss High Times 2007, uh, Sarah Newton. Hello. Well, when um, when talking about pot pride, first of all, this cannabis community that we've created this weekend at Seattle Hemp Fest is the absolute ultimate expression of pot pride. Um, I come from Texas, and we certainly have nothing like that here. Our laws are, are really harsh. Um, so you can imagine when I decided to try to become Miss High Times and get involved in the movement, um, my mother was petrified. Petrified. Um, for one, she thought, well, what's your school going to say? You're in college right now. Are they going to try to kick you out? And she thought, well, what if you want to get a job? What if you want to be a teacher? Um, what if my job tries to fire me because I'm your mother? And, she was, she was petrified and, and that really tripped me out because nobody should have to live in fear for themselves or for them, their children just for smoking herbs. Something so natural could grow right next to the grass out here, you know? And um, it, it really threw me for a spin. And um, then whenever, whenever I actually became Miss High Times, um, I did start to see a little backlash from that in Texas, in my community. Um, I live in a small town in Corpus Christi, and it got in the media and the news. They did an interview and um, the newspaper, and my friends were scared for me. I had people that took me off of their MySpace page because they were afraid to be associated with me. I'm like, wow, you know, we should all be be proud of this right now, you know. But um, my school eventually found out, and. Um, being an honor student and supposed to be one of like the top representations of Texas A&M, um, they didn't really like that. And they actually tried to kick me out of school. But um, I'm real close with my professors and um, with the Honors Council. And so there was these secret meetings I wasn't supposed to know about that were going on. And um, they were debating for a couple months on what to do with me. Like, should we kick her out? But if we kick her out, we're kicking out an honor student who's simply expressing what she believes in. Because it's not like they caught me smoking on campus. I'm not stupid. If you're going to do this, you have to be smart about it until it's legal. You know? But um, eventually they decided just to keep it under wraps. They didn't want to hear anything about it. Uh, I'm a senior, so I'll be out of their hair soon enough. But um, it's just, it's really a trip. But, you know, you have to go through these things. You have to go through the rain before rainbows, as you could say. Um, before the positive outcome happens. And um, now my, prof my professors um, get pot from me, um, <laughs> for one. <laughs> and um, for two, we have a normal chapter at our school now. A lot more people are coming out of the closet. Yeah, a lot more people in South Texas in our community are realizing that it's okay to speak up for what they believe in and that they should do it because that's the only way that changes are going to be made in our society. We cannot live in fear. We should not have to live in fear. We are all human beings. The people in the government, they're just human beings who are trying to control us and that's not okay. We've got to stand up for this right now, you know, and that's what we're doing. That's why we're all here this weekend, so you guys should be just as proud as any of us for being here and being a part of the movement at this time in history. So thank you. Good choice in uh, Miss High Times. Uh, you make us proud. Okay, so um, I'd like to make